The disappearance of several men from Toronto's gay village in 2014 prompted a horrifying new novel by Toronto writer David Demchik. And he joins us this morning with more on the newly released Red X. Congratulations on the new book. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to have it out there in the world. Okay, I gotta tell you, I was so scared reading this book because it's, I mean, it, it, it's based a little bit, but scared in a good way. Like good. I still, <laughs> a week after reading it, I'm like, if I catch something out of the corner of my eye, because there is this horrifying monster in the book that's centuries old. It is, absolutely. There is a centuries old monster that has been brought from um, ancient England, actually, to uh, the colonies uh, when Toronto was the town of York. And it's been preying on um, men in the uh, gay village um, or in the area that is now the gay village over a period of 200 years. Okay, but there's also lots of other things that are terrifying men in the gay village. There's AIDS, there's homophobia, there's police brutality, and that's all outlined in the book as well. Absolutely. There's sort of a feeling of a, of a structural homophobia that is at work in, in that area, and of course in culture in general, um, emerging over those 200 years in Canada. And, uh, and the, the people who are occupying that area, who live in that area, feel it very acutely. Right. And, and you were prompted to write this book. It actually came from a play that you were writing uh, because you knew a man who disappeared, or were friends with him, and he turned out to be one of the victims of, uh, of Bruce MacArthur. Was writing this novel, was it kind of therapy for you? Well, in the end, it turned out to be. That wasn't the intention originally. Mm -hmm. When the first three men had disappeared in 2014, of course, it had been a pattern of disappearances that had happened over decades in various cities um, across Canada, uh, throughout the United States. And, and so I was responding to that more as a phenomenon than as something very personal. But when, as you say, a friend of mine disappeared and then later was found murdered, it became intensely personal, so much so that I actually had to stop and think about whether I wanted to continue with the project. And for me, the way to continue was to actually insert myself into the book, into the narrative, in a number of different ways. First, uh, with some essays that talk about queerness and horror and my relationship to horror as a queer man and as, and as a young child who loved horror movies and stuff like that, but also found myself in some ways being implicated by my interest in horror and my interest in darkness. Right, and, and it's interesting that uh, I, I didn't realize it until I had read that essay that you wrote um, about how you know monsters were portrayed as somebody different, right? And it was, uh, it was a way for the queer, queer people at that time, you know, centuries ago, to identify. Absolutely. I mean, you see a pattern of uh, queer characters when they're allowed to exist in these stories at all, because there was a period where you just didn't have yes. um, queer, queer tinged characters. But either you were a, a comic character, or you were a villain, or you were a victim. And, um, and that was all that was allowed for us. Once queer people started sort of taking over the narrative, they were first of all able to enrich and embellish the characters. So you had really interesting, exciting queer villains and you thought, oh, well, you know, if I was gonna be a monster, I'd love to be like that. And then, <laughs> and then later on, things sort of evolved so that we started being less about archetypes and stereotypes and more about being ourselves, being our own human beings and be, being able to tell our own stories through these kinds of narratives. Right, I gotta tell you, like this is, it was a fabulous read and I, and I love, we're, we're running out of time, but I love too how it compares the Toronto of maybe a, a couple of decades ago to the Toronto that is now and how so many great sites were are gone. They're condos now. So you can read all about it in Red X. Uh, David Demchik, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, and thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here.